Good morning, sisters and brothers. These are the intentions for today's Mass. Birthday blessings for Stacia Marie Fletcher and Candice Horsford. For healing for Annalisa, Annabelle, Jesse, Joey, Sarah, Kayla Burke Green, Martin Critchlow, and Deacon Derek. And for the repose of the souls of Christopher, Ian, and Teddy Degans. Lord, you are the God of my salvation. I trust in you and have no fear. I sing of the joy which your love gives to me. And I draw deeply from the springs of your great kindness. Open your eyes to the wonder of this moment, the beginning of another day. Lord, you are the God of my salvation. I trust in you and have no fear. I sing of the joy which your love gives to me. And I draw deeply from the springs of your great kindness. Be with us, Lord, as we break through with each other to find the truth and beauty of each friend. Lord, you are the God of my salvation. I trust in you and have no fear. I sing of the joy which your love gives to me. And I draw deeply from the springs of your great kindness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you, good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so the loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ruth. <clears throat> Naomi had a kinsman on her husband's side, well-to-do and of Elimelech's clan. His name was Boaz. Ruth, the Moabitist, said to Naomi, let me go into the fields and glean among the heirs of Corn in the footsteps of some men who will look on me with favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she set out and went 
to glean in the fields after the reapers. And in ch it chanced that she came to that part of the fields which belonged to Boaz of Elimelech's clan. Boaz said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, and understand this. You are not to glean in any other field. Do not leave here, but stay with my servants. Keep your eyes on whatever part of the field they are reaping and follow behind. I have ordered my servants not to molest you. And if you are thirsty, go to the pitchers and drink what the servants have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground. And she said to him, how have I so earned your favor that you take notice of me even though I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered her, I have been told all you have done for your mother-in-law since your husband's death and how you left your own father and mother and the land where you were born to come among a people whom you knew nothing about before you came here. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And when they came together, the Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. And the woman said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord who has not left the dead man without next of kin this day to perpetuate his name in Israel. The child will be a, comforter, a comfort to you and the prop of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you and is more to you than seven sons has given him birth. And Naomi took the child to her own bosom, and she became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name. A son has been born for Naomi, they said, and they named him Obed. This was the father of David's father, Jesse. The word of the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and who walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands, you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house, your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who bears the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. You have only one Father, and He is in heaven. You have only one teacher, the Christ. Alleluia. Hallelujah, Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Addressing the people and his disciples, Jesus said, The scribes and the Pharisees occupy the chair of Moses. You must therefore do what they tell you and listen to what they say. But do not be guided by what they do, since they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders. But will they lift a finger to move them? Not they. Everything they do is done to attract attention, like wearing broader phylacteries and longer tassels, like wanting to take the place of honor at banquets and the front seats in the synagogues, being greeted obsequiously in the market squares and having people call them rabbi. You, however, must not allow yourselves to be called rabbi, since you have only one master, and you are all brothers. You must call no one on earth your father, since you have only one father, and he is in heaven. Nor must you allow yourselves to be called teachers, for you have only one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Anyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and anyone who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Addressing the people and his disciples, Jesus said, The greatest among you must be your servant. Yes, the greatest among you must serve. And all the more the least among you should be willing to serve God and your neighbor. True love begets loving service. If you love, you will be happy to serve. And Jesus is addressing not only his disciples, his disciples means Christians, means you, but he's addressing all people, that is everybody, of all religions, nations, and races. True love begets loving service. And so all of us should be willing and happy to serve not only God, but our neighbors who are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we serve not only them, but all human beings, because they are our fellow children in God. And Christ died for them all. If you are the greatest, Give until it hurts. And it would be wonderful if some of you were wannabe, wannabe the greatest, so that you will be able to serve all the more. Jesus said, and he did, 
I have come not to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. To give my life as a ransom for many. Yes, your service should cost you, is going to cost you, if you do it generously and lovingly. Your service will demand more and more each day. The Lord will never say, enough is enough. Your service will enlarge your heart with love and with joy, which you can't comprehend unless you serve. Service gives you strength, gives you joy, gives you love. Loving service begets true love. Today's reading, very interesting, tells the story of true love and of service to God and men, an example that we should follow. So let's take a quick look. Naomi, her husband, their family of two sons, lived in the little town of Bethlehem in Judea. And there was a terrible famine there, so they emigrated, emigrated to the country of Moab and stayed there for years. And in the, during that time, Naomi's husband died. Her two sons got married to two more by two men. But these two men both died prematurely, without issue. And Naomi, hearing that bad times were over in Judea, determined to return to Bethlehem. So part of the way, she was accompanied by her two daughters-in-law. And halfway there, Opa, one of them, kissed her goodbye, and left to return to her country of Moab. But the other one, her name was Ruth, which means beloved, kissed her and hugged her and refused to leave her. She said, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Well, they arrived in Bethlehem, and the word spread how good Ruth had been to her mother-in-law when Naomi's husband died, and how she had left her own father and her own mother and the land where she was born to come to a people who, of whom she knew nothing. And God arranged then that Ruth met Naomi's cousin Boaz. They got married and had a son. And the name that the people gave this son was Obed. Obed, the name means servant, servant of God, and because the people knew so much of Ruth's service. Service, service of God and neighbor. And prophetically, Obed fulfilled the same role of service that his descendants were to have. Obed was to be the father of David's father, Jesse. Jesus was to be a descendant of King David. That is a wonderful example to all of us of service, service within a family, 
service by a foreigner. The poet Milton was an Anglican. When he became blind, he wrote the famous lines, they also serve who only stand and wait. They also serve who only stand and wait. Yes, the physically or mentally challenged, the sick, the old, by simply accepting God's will, willingly, generously accepting God's will for them, whatever it may be. They serve, and they serve extremely well. And in addition, by their peace and love and gratitude and cooperation with their help givers, they create a situation in which love appears, in which service begets love, and love in turn begets service. And so we have a situation where love increases, service increases, each one begetting the other. A bit like the bond of Ruth and Naomi. So service to God and man is something wonderful, a gift from God. This service develops the virtues and talents in us of which we were not even aware, makes us realize that we're capable of possessing generosity, humility, self-confidence, happiness, and joy. All that we learn from loving service. And then somehow, somewhere along the line, and I don't know how, but it happens that this loving service makes us more forgiving, more forgiving, and more forgivable. Something wonderful. And God then, in his turn, will give you what you need in love and service, and will reward your efforts in this world. Maybe God will give you a present, perhaps a large donation for your charitable work. That would be lovely, yes. Or he'd give you a greater share in the suffering of Christ. God knows more than we know. God gives more than we can conceive. So let us take the resolution to be people of service, to serve as Christ served. Amen. Amen. Would you stand for the prayer of the faithful? Jesus, you came among us as one who serves. And so, Lord, we pray. Lord, make our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishop and all bishops, priests and deacons, loving servants of all their people. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, you have called me as a Christian to grow daily in the likeness of Christ, to serve as he served, and to spend my life to ransom many from the slavery of sin. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, they also serve who only stand and wait. Help me to offer myself with Jesus on the cross, knowing that sometimes you wish me to suffer with you and not to do. Lord, make me faithful to your will. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, give peace and prosperity to all nations and to their citizens the desire to be of service to their country and to one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We place these prayers in the hands of Mary, the mother of the afflicted, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. I accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this world, church. Receive our offering, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord it our is, God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created a human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Yeah. At the Saviour's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on, <coughs> on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. With the law there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. For those of us who are unable to be present at the Eucharist and receive Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity in Holy Communion, there is the assurance that whenever we open our hearts to Him, He comes to us. Let us pray. Jesus, although at this time I am unable to receive You sacramentally, I believe and I entreat You to make Your home within my heart. Penetrate my soul with the sweet fragrance of Your presence. Give me grace to see yes to all that you ask of me and to live every day according to your holy will amen in darkness, injured and lost, when I sensed the calm.
comforting word. I am the Lord of light. I am called Jesus Christ. I am your joy, my friend. Just and bend. Come to me always, eat of me always, and you will never want. Rest in me always, drink of me always, and you will never thirst. I was neglected, spurned by the world, when these words lifted up my soul. I am your true solace, I am your only grace, I am your saviour, dear friend, just and bad. Come to me always, eat of me always, and you will never want. Rest in me always, drink of me always, and you will never thirst. I was so frightened, burdened by sin, when my Lord murmured this from within. I am the one who bleeds, I am the one who heals, I am compassion, dear friend, just and then. Come to me always, eat of me always, and you will never want. Rest in me always, drink of me always, and you will never Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord my your life.
Oh, 